Hey guys, it is Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com. I have an absolutely beautiful song from Pink Floyd today. We're gonna to learn how to play the final cut off of the album of the same name. Uh, so this one is gorgeous. It's obviously more of a piano-based piece, so um, this is kind of my arrangement of, of those piano parts. But David Gilmore does have an absolutely killer guitar solo in it. We're gonna take a look at that as well too. I'm gonna to grab my strap for that one. Uh, kind of in the middle of the lesson. But before that, we're going to kind of get into the, the actual chords um, that are going on in the song first. Now, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, ring the notification bell and all that stuff. Like, comment, watch the videos. It really, really does help uh, kind of keep the channel alive here on YouTube. Um, YouTube doesn't really support educational content too much anymore, so the, the most that you guys can do, uh, whatever you guys can do, it would be really great. Um, and if you really, truly want to support um, uh, what I do here on YouTube, uh, join my Guitar Academy. Uh, that's the only reason this YouTube channel could even exist. So uh, you'll see a link to that in the description below. And uh, that's, that academy contains all my courses for from complete courses uh, for beginners to uh, more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone. Great community over there. Free seven day trial by clicking that link below. All right, so let's jump into the track. So I'm in standard tuning here. Like I said, this is much uh, like a piano based piece. So we're just kind of doing our uh, arrangement of that here. So, so start with this uh, this verse, uh, just kind of nice and softly played. Kind of does that progression twice. So we're going to start out with just a standard F major bar chord. Um, so there's going to be a lot of bar chords in this song. Typically is the case when you have like piano based music that you're trying to translate to guitar uh, It's not always the easiest thing. So hopefully you've got those nailed if you don't go to my guitar academy in the beginner course to get you uh, all fixed up in that department uh, So we're gonna start here with this F major bar. So it's a bar at the first fret, second fret on the G, third fret on the D, and then um, third fret on the A Then what it's gonna basically do is Stick with an F major chord, but we're gonna have C in the bass. Um, so it kind of sounds the best when you just stick with the those middle strings on the guitar. So what I'm doing here is I'm playing the third fret on the A string and the D, second fret on the G, first fret on the B. Shove that for a couple of beats, and then we're gonna resolve that to a regular C major chord. So we have this, four beats on the F, and the F with the C in the bass, two beats, two beats on the C. Then we're gonna go to a B flat major chord. Now you can play this like this, which there's some actual acoustic guitar strumming going on in the song, and it sounds like we're kind of playing this uh, version of it. Um, so you're getting that F here on the first part of the high E string in there. So generally when you wanna get that in there and it's actually not get muted out, you wanna play it like this. So it's a bar from the high E string um, first fret over to the fifth string, the A string, and in front of that, the third fret across the B, G, and the D. That's not the easiest thing. Some people like to just smash their. And as you probably saw me play it, I usually do that bar with my pinky. I don't know why, but um, so anyway, if you want this high note, this voicing, uh, this this way of playing it. And then we're gonna go resolve that to four beats of that and then resolve to back to the F. Then go through those chords again. So when you resolve to the F the second time, you're gonna go hit this open A string that's gonna take us into the next progression, which I just call it pre-chorus. It's not like this is like one, not one of those songs that are like straight. Here's a chorus, verse, chorus, pre-chorus. You know, all that. Just um, not a pop song. Let's just say that. So, but I'm calling this pre-chorus anyway. So we're gonna coming out of that verse. We're gonna have that all so that at the end of the second uh, time through the riff, uh, the chords. We have this little open A real quick, and then we're gonna go to this uh, progression.
right, so that pre-chorus is going to start with that B flat again, like I said. You want to play that version of it, then to the F, then back to the B flat and F again. Back to this B flat for the third time. So remember the first time going into the first time you hit the B flat in this pre chorus, as in a little open A string in front of it. Well, that's there on the third time through as well. So the first time, B flat to F. Then the second B flat to F is not there. Then the third time going to the B flat, you can have the open A again. So now the B flat goes from B flat to C. C major and then to a D minor chord. Now from there, we kind of just pause and we go over here and grab a G minor bar chord. So this is a full bar of the third fret. And in front of that bar, you'll have the fifth fret on the A and the fifth fret on the D. So just strum that. Really all you hear that is just played once on piano and it just kind of, they just let it for a full eight beats. You just kind of ring out and then, well, on the, in the upbeat of the last beat. Like a C, you can hit like a C power chord. I, I think that sounds good. Which is just the uh, third fret there on the A, fifth fret on the D, fifth fret on the G, and then that takes us to part, the part I'm, I'm calling the chorus. So whatever. So, but this is really cool because there's a little line that's going on in the string section. Um, so I'm doing that on the guitar too, around the based around the chord. So the chord's still implied there, which is it starts with an F major here. Um, but we can still do the string melodies over that F chord and the C chord. So it looks like this. just kind of goes to that. See, kind of the same ending as the uh, pre-chorus. So what I'm doing for that, this, when I go, and the vocals come in here on that A minor. So this, I'm playing, basically all you gotta do is play the first fret here on the um, B string, second fret on the G, and third fret on the D. So that enough will give us an F major chord. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to let the notes ring as much as possible. So I'm going to pick the, the note on the B string, then the note on the G string, and then pick the open G. So lift that finger up, and then pick the D string that I'm holding at the third fret. So it's those four. Kind of let them ring together. So when you repeat that, kind of sounds pretty cool. And from there, we go to strumming an A minor chord back to that little arpeggiated thing on the F four times and then back to A minor again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to a C major chord, so a standard C major, but we're going to try to do a little moving line on that. So you have that little moving line going on in the string section, so uh, it's pretty easy to play on guitar, so you just, you're going to play the C major chord here, right? But then add you know, this top note, this G of the third fret on the high E string. So you'll pick, pick that first, and then you're gonna lift up and play the open high E, and then play the third fret on the B, and then the first fret on the B, which you already have as part of the C. So, we have... so what I've been doing is just kind of strum the chord, then start the melody, then play the melody again without the chord strum, and then strum melody without the strong. So. so, so far with this. Now from there, it's pretty much the it goes to the B uh, flat major chord, then straight to the D minor, and we're going to end this one once again, just kind of holding that G minor. 
and um, end it with that C power chord. That takes us to this next riff is kind of like a similar to uh, what happens at the the very ending of the song. Some really nice vocal harmonies here, and I just I call this like the transition riff, which just basically takes us back to the repeat the song, the verse again. And uh, it's basically all it is is this at this like this. So it's kind of like the, the chords that are in the, the, the verse, uh, but there, we're going to replace this little, the F that happens at the beginning of the verse, just with that little uh, arpeggiated F. Then we have the F with the C, and I kind of still pick it across that. And then the C, and B flat, and back to the arpeggiated F. And that's, that's when all the vocals are going on, the little vocal harmonies. And then we just get back to the verse, which is kind of the straight F that we did at the very beginning. So it just goes through the verse, the pre-chorus, and it, again, just nothing different there. Um, and then we have the guitar solo. Um, so the solo is actually over the chorus. Um, so I'm gonna, so there's nothing new to, there to learn really for the, for the chords. Uh, but I do need to grab my Strat and show you guys how to play the solo. It's a beautiful solo. David Gilmore never, never misses. So uh, let's take a look at that right now. So that is an absolutely beautiful solo, of course. So uh, we're gonna start here. A lot of times, so it's, when he's letting a note sustain, he's gonna put some vibrato on it. David Gilmore, more generally, when he's doing, when he's bending a note and holding that note, he's doing the vibrato with the vibrato arm. So, and then when he's not doing a bend, he's generally doing the vibrato with his hand. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go through. You'll see me sometimes, okay, I'm sorry, do the thing. And I'm doing it with a vibrato arm. And then here, I'll do it with my fingers. So um, gonna, that's basically the general rule that I'm using there for, for the really David Gilmore solos. Is I, this bent note, got my vibrato on it, do it with the bar. Anyway, so we're going to start here with this first phrase. So that's going to just be a whole set bend at the 18th fret there on the B string. And then you're gonna quickly do a pull off from 20 to 17 on the high E. All right, the next phrase is this. All right, so that's gonna be the 17th fret on the G string first, and then over to the 18th fret, and then you're gonna, on the B string, and then uh, bend up a whole step. And then, so that was just picking 18, and then pick uh, 17, pull off to 15, slide down to 13. From there we have this next phrase. All right, so we're gonna start here with this. So that's the 17th fret there on the G. Over to 15 on the B, 17 on the B. Half step, bend, then release the bend and play the 17th fret again, and then the 15th fret twice. Then come down here, we're gonna... That's gonna be a bend at the 13th fret on the B. 
then pick 13 without the bend, down to 10, and then over to the 12th fret on the G string, a whole step. From there we have this. So that's kind of sliding quickly into the 12th fret there on the D string. Then play t uh, 10 on the G, play 12 and then a bend and release on the 12th. And then another bend and release at the 12, pull off to 10, and then you just do the bar to kind of bring the note down. It's kind of a little bar dive on that 10th fret there. And then we're gonna end it uh, right here with this. So that's a bend that's at the 20th fret on the B string. And then he bends it up another half step. And then release the whole bend down to just the 20th fret without a bend. Uh, sometimes it's hard to keep the note to sustain out there, like, like whatever patch I'm using, sometimes that note will sustain and uh, all the way to the end. And sometimes it won't. If it doesn't, you can just kind of pick the note again when you get down to the G without the, um, I'm sorry, the 20th fret there without the, uh, without the bend. So we, I, kind of like this. Might kind of, he doesn't do that though. He, but his is kind of rings out. And then we have this. So that's going to be 15, 18 on the B string and then into a bend it. And then this last little line. So that is 18 on the B. Pull off 17 to 15 on the B. Then play 17, 15 on the G. And then come down here, you're gonna pull off 14 to 12 on the G. And slide down to 10. That is it for the solo. All right, now, so coming out of this solo, uh, we have the, the solo was over the chorus chord progression. The chorus chord progression continues again uh, um, with the actual chorus over it. Um, but the only difference here is this last chorus in the song uh, doesn't have that ending uh, C5, that C power chord in it. It seems to just kind of, kind of just stop when it stops on that G minor. And then it goes straight to that ending, just. Uh, so that ending is pretty much the transition section that we did earlier. And that last step, instead of doing it as an arp, uh, arpeggiate based thing, just from the F. But the first one is. So it's just like the transition riff. He's kind of just randomly picking across those. And then. And that is it. It is a beautiful track. Uh, really, I think one of the last with Roger Waters, but um, I, I really wish uh, we could see them play this live. I couldn't find any video of them playing it live. Maybe somebody else couldn't find it, but I couldn't find David Gilmore playing it live. So anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.